I'm starting a new project. This is a picture of a Sheraton work table. This is late 18th century and the original piece that is shown here was made in Newport in the 18th century by John and uh, Thomas Seymour. So the legs are typical um, Sheraton style, uh, tapered and turned. However, n a lot of times in this kind of furniture you see these reeded tapered, reeded tapered legs. This was from a previous Sheraton piece that I made years ago. And in this case, they did not use reeds. There are, there is embedded uh, banding um, in, in these, in these grooves. There are six grooves and I'm in the process now of, of uh, creating those grooves for the banding. Now, in the turning, um, there are these little beads up here, and of course this taper, which is typical. Then at the bottom will be the brass casters. Now, I, as typical for me, I create these models then from the pictures in SketchUp. And here is my assembly in, in SketchUp. And then going to some of the detail, the legs are shown in this view with the joinery, the mortises, and the grooves for the banding. Also from SketchUp, then I can create the full-size template and in the case of turning templates I I cut down the center line of the template then I can hold it up while the lathe is turning I can hold it up and mark various places where the turning changes diameter or shape so these work out quite well for the turning. And in making these little grooves, I wasn't sure how I was going to do that. And the first thing that I do is, of course, there are these uh, places on the notches on the um, lathe that allow me to go 60 degrees around and, and mark it up. So I used the tool rest and this knife to cut a cut the parallel lines and then after cutting the parallel lines then I used the 1 8 inch chisel. Perhaps I can zero in a little bit on this. I used the 1 8 inch chisel then and, and just cut down straight like this. And that tells me two things then when I cut down like this or it also it tells me that the, the width whether I've got the parallel cuts with a knife in in a proper width and it also if, if a little strip starts to tear out it stops the tear out and I guess a third thing that it does is that it it, uh, it 
allows the chisel to work a little bit better in, in taking out the material. Now, if, if in areas where the parallel lines may be a little skinny and not enough, then uh, sometimes I'll, I'll use this chisel then and I can place it right where the end of the chisel shows and and uh, and and make a, another parallel cut. In this case it looks like the width of my knife cuts are working out really well. So then the next step is to just pull these little chips out of here. And And then um, the banding is a 32nd inch thick. And so I don't have to go very deep here. I'm tearing out a little bit on the edge there, but I think it's okay. This, I'll, I'll put the banding in with hot hide glue. I've just tried a a piece of banding in this location here just to see how it works. I haven't glued it totally. I stuck it in here temporarily. The, actually the banding that I'm going to use will be black and white like this but it's uh, going to be a little bit different design. So that's on order and uh, should be here in a few days. So I got to make six of these channels and then glue six of these um, pieces into here. And then of course up in the top portion of the leg, the square portion of the leg, this will all be veneered in a pattern much like much like this. I'll have some crotch uh, maple uh, in this area here and then some banding around the outside and also a, a piece uh, in the horizontal position here. And that's done on two faces. So this kind of a inlay will be done on this, this area up here.